So you've just finished a tiring semester and doing any extra work is probably the least of your concerns. And that's generally how I would have approached any school year. But that quickly changed when I started in year 12. And here's what I mean. But just as a heads up, relaxing is definitely the most important thing during the holidays. So keep that in mind. But being smart with your holiday time and just doing some work here and there can save you a lot of time and stress during the actual term. And this is because if let's say you're working at this level during this school semester and then during the break you just drop off, when the term begins again it's going to be very hard to have a completely v-shaped recovery where you just go straight back to what you were working at before the holiday started. So this happened to me in year 11 and it was definitely not a great feeling. So what I personally recommend for year 12, and take this as a grain of salt, is to maintain a slightly lower workload than usual. So you can still do things that you wouldn't normally do during school. <laughs> but at the same time, this will also allow you to quickly change gears when the new semester begins. So let's go through what you can do during the holidays to maximize your time. Now, the most obvious thing is to make sure to catch up on anything that you've missed during the term. So this one is pretty straightforward. And if you are up to date, another tip I found quite useful was reflection. Yes, I know this one sounds a bit wishy-washy, but genuinely, it helps a lot. And in particular, think back to the previous tests that you found difficult. What could have you've done better during or before the test? And then how can you improve on this in the future? For me, I would always feel rushed before an English assessment because teachers would hand back feedback slow due to everyone being extremely busy at that time. And I always seemed to get into this situation. So I made the goal of prioritizing essay writing earlier than everyone else. And just by doing that, it made those peak times during the term much more bearable. So it's always great to do a bit of reflection because when you're in the moment with assessments flying everywhere, it can be hard to recognize what you're doing well or not well in. And finally, study ahead. And again, your holidays don't need to be an extension of your school term, so you don't need to be grinding out essays each day. Now, it is still in your best interest to maintain a degree of schedule, so you don't get that post-holiday shock that I mentioned before. So this is what I did for each of my subjects. For English, if I was doing a new text next term, I would prepare for this in advance. So watching a summary video of whatever text you're doing, and then going online, finding a text summary and analysis website, and make some short notes. Sometimes this could just be screenshots. So no need to do anything complicated. What I'm doing here is to simply think about your text in advance. And another good thing to work on is argument analysis. Because if you think about the essays that you do on the final year exam, argument analysis is the only one that you don't spend as much time on. What I mean is for text response and comparative, you most likely spend up to 10 weeks analyzing, reading, and writing about your chosen texts. But oftentimes you might only spend a few weeks on argument analysis. So it's no surprise that this is usually the lowest scoring section. So that's why I found it useful to work on this throughout the year. And this doesn't have to be full essays. What I worked on the most was actually sentence starters, stock phrases, and sentences that I put onto flashcards and I wouldn't necessarily memorize these, but I would try and use these before an assessment. So that was my approach for English. Now for math, science and other subjects, if possible, I tried to get ahead with the content. But rather than just reading textbooks and answering questions, I would prefer to watch the videos since they were much easier. But basically, I like to get at least the first two weeks of next term's content done in advance. And that way you give yourself a bit of a buffer zone where even if you fall behind two weeks during the term, well, you'll still be at a normal pace. So that does give you a bit of peace of mind. Now, a common question is, should we do practice exams? And I think the general consensus is, if these are the term four holidays, then definitely yes. But if you're watching this earlier, it's probably the case that you haven't finished all the content. But that doesn't mean that you can't do any questions. And what actually helped me the most was this doing exam questions consistently throughout the year, even if I haven't finished all the content. And yes, it can be a chore, but if you have something like checkpoints, then that's great. Or well, what I did was to just work through some of the older exam papers and just doing those relevant questions to the current study design. 
but I would make sure I would do five to 10 questions per day, which is not a lot considering how short these questions are. And this is perfect for rounding out your knowledge because most of us are probably used to textbook questions or the questions teachers give us, but not so much for real exam questions. So doing these in isolation will no doubt enhance your learning. So that is the video, hope that helped and enjoy your holidays.